I think a lot of people assume that when you're living with an illness like schizophrenia, it's kind of nonstop symptoms and every day is kind of a bad day. But the reality for me, and I'm sure a lot of other people who are living with a chronic mental illness like schizophrenia, is that there are good days, there are bad days, and there are very bad days, and there are very good days. And there's such a wide spectrum of the experience of what it is to manage a mental illness like schizophrenia on a day-to-day basis. Now, before I dive into what a good day and a bad day looks like for me living with schizophrenia, I want to take a minute to let you know about some really exciting new things that we have going on here. So the first is that we have started a new podcast and a new YouTube channel to go along with that podcast. It's called Living Well with Mental Illness, and we will link to it in the description below if you want to check that out. It's kind of just broader conversations about mental health, what it means to live well with a mental illness, and, you know, just bigger issues about that that me and Rob talk about in the podcast format. So if you're interested in that, head over to that channel to give it a listen. Also, as you probably already know, we have an online peer support community for people who are living with schizophrenia spectrum illnesses and their loved ones. But something that we're really, really excited to introduce is a more broad online peer support community for anyone who's living with mental illness and the people who support them. So if you are interested in checking out this brand new peer support community, make sure to head over to online peersupport.com to find out more and to get started with it. So now in terms of good days and bad days for me, let's maybe start off with bad days because I think that's maybe what people assume a lot of my days are like. And I wouldn't say that I have a lot of bad days currently, probably roughly about 50-50, maybe a little bit more leaning towards bad days than good days. Um, Just because the realities of living with a chronic mental illness, there's always kind of something, some challenging thing that pops up. But a bad day for me right now, while on medication and while in a relatively stable place, kind of takes the shape more of having more symptoms that kind of impede my ability to function throughout the day. So this can take the shape of hearing voices, hearing things that aren't really there. It can take the shape of perception hallucinations. So that's something that I get commonly where I will see movement in shapes or perception of things visually is distorted in some way. And that's kind of the primary visual hallucination that I get is. Other ways that a bad day can kind of take shape are feeling really low energy or low motivation or really flat and just not really feeling like I'm in my body and feeling like there's this sense of detachment. I'm not able to be present. There's a lot of brain fog and just feeling this disconnect from my life. Another thing that can come about with bad days is increased paranoia. So feeling that people in my life are against me or out to get me in some way or that there are conspiratorial things happening around me and whatnot and kind of falling into that delusional paranoid line of thinking. Scattered thinking and just feeling really kind of disorganized in my mind and having a really hard time communicating things as well can also come along with my bad days where it's hard to keep a train of thought going. And then obviously as a result of that, it's hard to then verbalize what I'm thinking or wanting to communicate to other people as well. So that's all kind of the gist of what a bad day for me looks like right now while on medication and relatively stable. It definitely feels sometimes like I can't manage it and I just can't get through the day, but I can. I can without going to the hospital or needing some sort of intervention like that. And so I guess you could say it's still kind of manageable. Now, the flip side of this is that a really, really bad day for me, and this is typically when I'm off medication or go off medication suddenly, um, is when I become really, really symptomatic. And I have hallucinations and delusions and paranoid thinking that become so intrusive and kind of all-encompassing. Command hallucinations are typically something that I experience on a really, really bad day. And oftentimes these command hallucinations and my symptoms in general have a really dark edge to them. Often I am experiencing suicidal thinking as well. And so the command hallucinations kind of go in line with that sort of theme of thinking. And it can be really, really difficult to manage. And that's kind of when I need some sort of external intervention like hospital or seeing my doctor and changing meds or something like that. I haven't had a day like this though in a 
several years now, so it's not very frequent. And it's really more what I was describing before about a bad day right now while on medication and whatnot that happens more frequently. So that's a bad day for me, but I also really want to talk about what a good day looks like because those happen as well. And so I guess maybe a way to describe this, a good day would be when symptoms that I described as a bad day are not happening and kind of the absence of those sorts of things. I think the reality is though that even on good days, I do still experience some symptoms. It's just more that they feel more manageable and they don't really cause me distress. Another way that I feel good sometimes is when I feel present within my own body and mind and I feel I feel like I'm able to engage with my life and the people in my life in a way that I want to and in a way that feels good to me. On a good day, I am able to do things that, you know, ultimately take care of myself. So eating well, exercising, sleeping well. And, you know, these things kind of help on bad days too, but I feel extra capacity to engage in them and get more out of them on good days as well. I can also feel more productive in work that I need to get done or in taking care of our house or in taking care of my kids. And it just feels like things kind of click and fall into place on the good days. Now, this doesn't happen super frequently, but when it does, it feels really, really good. I think an average day lies somewhere in between this good day that I described and the bad day that I described, where I definitely experience symptoms, you know, fairly regularly, but I'm able to fall somewhere in between those levels of being able to manage them and deal with them. And it's generally somewhere in between there in terms of my motivation and my productivity and my feeling of being present. So this is my experience of what a good day and a bad day looks like living with schizophrenia, but I know that everyone experiences the illness very differently. And so what we did was we asked our audience in the community section of our YouTube channel to share with us what their good day and bad day living with schizophrenia looks like. And so I want to share with you some of the responses that we got from you, our audience members. So the first response I want to read is, a good day for me means I'm present in what I'm trying to accomplish, whether that be work or caring for my daughter. Good days still come with challenges like hallucinations and brain fog, but are manageable. A bad day for me is in my bedroom, lost in my interior world of isolation and fear, talking to myself and unable to communicate effectively with others. Most days are somewhere in between these. Even though I take medications, symptom management can be physically and emotionally draining. I cherish the good days and try to focus on them during my bad days. And so, yeah, that all really resonates with me too and what I was kind of trying to share about... Um, symptoms kind of being present regardless of good days or bad days, but feeling more able to manage them and an average day falling somewhere in between that good and bad. The next one I want to share is a good day is I am me. I can do everything I want to do. I am happy. A bad day, I feel like a rabbit. I am everybody's prey. I can hear everything. I used to think that everybody could see what was happening to me if they looked into my eyes, so I try not to look at anyone but I realized it happens quietly, like walking too far into the ocean and slipping under the waves. No one notices. But if they do notice and they ask me what's wrong, something inside me freezes up and I can't tell them. I can't speak. So I really like how that this person kind of used imagery to describe how it feels on a bad day. And yeah, that resonates with me as well. The next one is for a friend. So someone else wrote it for them. He says a bad day is like four loud people talking at him from behind, telling him bad things will happen to his loved ones and it's his fault or that they can cause it. A good day is the voices being muted and quiet so he can focus on his surroundings more and get outside. The next one is a good day is minor hallucinations and got something done today. Bad day, talking to people who aren't there, very scared because of paranoia and delusional thinking, crying spells and swinging from overly jumpy to catatonic. So yeah, I didn't really mention much about the mood component or, you know, that kind of state, but that definitely fluctuates from good to bad days as well. The next one is a bad day is being overwhelmed by command hallucinations that take the form of religious obsessions. And I find myself in church the whole day thinking Jesus is speaking to me. A good day is at home doing some chores, keeping myself busy, and later taking evening walks, basically doing what normal people do. And I like that they pointed that out, that really a good day looks a lot like anyone else's day. And a normal day might even look a lot like someone else's day too, just with a little bit of extra challenges in terms of managing symptoms. The next one is good day is moderate to high energy, voices absent or easily manageable, and no paranoid thinking. 
a bad day is can either be very low energy and feeling I cannot control my brain to do anything or very present and disturbing voices and sometimes strong paranoid thinking. The next one is a good day would be one where I'm not super anxious and overwhelmed. Instead, I feel social and optimistic and simply motivated and productive. It's much easier to articulate thoughts and practically any idea in these times. On my worst days, I simply feel wrong. There's days where I simply feel like an overstuffed balloon and I kind of just isolate and don't get much of anything done, but in a more panicked and anxious way than just normal depression. I feel paranoid and wrong around anyone else. Conversations are hard to interpret correctly and near impossible to contribute to meaningfully. Visual hallucinations are more intense and distracting and varied while what little audible stuff I get, I get gets more commanding and concerning. I often panic a lot easier or am knocked out of whatever composure I try to keep more easily. And it's not uncommon for me to be unable to speak or silent or unable to admit to myself or anyone else that anything's wrong, since surely there are worse times that exist. There's been times akin to like multi-week long panic attacks where I couldn't even escape my delusions or fears in what sleep I could get. And I kept thinking there were people sent in the middle of the night to kill me when I'd hear something. So I think this again does a really good job of describing what it feels like especially on a bad day. I like the idea of an overstuffed balloon and just wanting to isolate and not being able to get much done, but in a really panicked and anxious way and describing that kind of paranoid tinge to it as well. I liked how they also said a few times that they just felt wrong and that, you know, they, there was this misalignment, I guess you could say, that was inside of them. And they described not being able to communicate or speak, which is also something that I experience quite regularly on bad days as well. The next one is a good day for me with schizoaffective disorder is probably much like anyone else's. My medications keep most of my symptoms under control unless I get really stressed out, for example. So on a good day, I probably won't be experiencing many schizoaffective symptoms. I might see things move out of the corner of my eye or do some of the behaviors that I do because of some delusions I have, like incorrectly thinking about my passwords in case someone's reading my mind while logging into something, but not to an extent that it gets in my way. On a bad day though, my symptoms are kicked into high gear. I will typically be hallucinating throughout the day, but not constantly like you see in some simulators. For me, it's more like sometimes hearing a sentence about the situation I'm in, or hearing my name being called out, seeing spirits in the shadows, seeing everyday objects transform into living animals and back again, etc. On a bad day, I'm typically paranoid that everyone I love at best hates me and at worst is plotting my demise, so I'm usually isolating. If I go out, I get really freaked out because I think people are reading my mind or know something about me that I don't know. Sometimes I will have more intense delusions like the world isn't real or I'm not real or I'm the only real thing or the world is ending and that's when it can get dangerous because I might choose to act on thoughts like that in ways that put myself in danger. I've also been sure I was communing with spirits or terrified they were going to harm me and people I love. There's typically a lot of crying out of fear. I'm either really scared or completely blunted. I've been told that on a bad day, I don't sound like myself. I'm really good at masking, and if you don't know me, you might not notice it. But to my really close friends, they say it sounds like more artificial than how I normally am. Like almost hollow. And my affect can be blunted too, but not always. I think this person did a really, really wonderful job of describing what it's like and some of the things that you can deal with in terms of delusional thinking and whatnot. And that's definitely something that I experience as well. The next one is a good day is got a lot accomplished. Saw my psychiatrist and meds working. Bad day is catatonic, hallucinating, seeing shadow people, barely able to get out of bed, nightmares, and feeling miserable. The next one is my good day is a day without an extremely paranoid thought and where I can ignore any voices I hear because what it says isn't important. A bad day is high paranoia when I think I'm upset and think I'm going to jail despite not having done anything wrong. So this is kind of an interesting perspective on the weight we give our symptoms can sometimes impact whether we have a good day or a bad day. And that, you know, that can be a kind of hard thing to choose, but something to maybe try out is trying to reframe your experience of the symptoms you're experiencing. The next one is a bad day is persecutory auditory hallucinations and fearing eye contact. A good day is I like myself and thrive on being alive. So I like that description of what a good day is, you know, feeling content with yourself and feeling happy to be alive and like you're thriving. The next one is a good day is I am happy. I am myself. I have the power to make things have schizophrenia symptoms, but I can manage them. A bad day is mood is down. I can't do anything. I'm very tired. Schizophrenia symptoms are on so bad that it's hard to do anything. And because I'm so tired, I don't have power to manage with them. I go all day headphones on. So I like that they incorporated what they do to kind of cope with that in terms of wearing headphones all day. 
um, I think it's really important to have kind of a go-to set of distractions or, you know, coping mechanisms that you can turn to in a bad day. I definitely have things that I do regularly in, a, in order to cope with the more bad days that I experience. So thank you so much to everyone who contributed their experience of what a good day or a bad day is. I'm sorry I couldn't read them all, but they were all really, really great to read in terms of hearing more from other people about what their experience of a good day versus a bad day is while living with schizophrenia. I definitely really related to a lot of the things that people shared and people brought up things that I didn't even think about that I do also experience as well. So thank you very much for that. And maybe we should always ask you, our audience, to contribute be done our videos because it was really great and I learned from you as well. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. I would also really love to hear from the rest of you. What does a good day versus a bad day look like? If you feel comfortable, please feel free to share in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. And lastly, just a quick reminder again about our new podcast, Living Well with Mental Illness, which we will link to in the description below, and also the new online peer support community, which you can find more out about at onlinepeersupport.com. Again, that's linked in the description below too. Thank you so much for watching and as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.